In this video, I want to go through a sample exam question. This is a question that was actually on an exam, specifically exam two in spring 2022's numerical methods course. This particular problem is not about numerical methods explicitly, it's about differential equation formulation, which is an important aspect of, uh, well, problem formulation. And I want to also talk about test taking strategies. Remember that in chemical engineering exams, I guess that's true about a lot of subjects, there's a lot of time pressure. So you've got to be strategic about how you spend your time so that you get as many points as possible in as little time as possible. And I think the way to do that is to show that you understand what the questions are testing for and not spend your time on all the details necessary to get to the final answer. So at least in the way <clears throat> we grade or I grade when I teach a course, it, it emphasizes understanding over calculating numbers and things like that. The first thing I advise students to, to do is read the whole exam. So you're not obligated to start at question one. And I usually need to warm up when I take exams. So it helps if I start with a question that is most comfortable to me whatever I feel like doing, and, uh, and then go to the more challenging questions. And I also like to think of things in terms of low-hanging fruit, right? So there are some problems where I can very quickly get most of the points without doing a lot of work. And in fact, I think that's actually part of the exam, right? So my exams are designed to test whether or not you understand enough to know where your time is being wasted and where it's being well spent. So in this case, I'm not going to read through the whole exam, <clears throat> but I'm going to read through the first question because I want these videos to focus on the first question. So our purpose right now is not to do the problems in this video, but we want to identify what we need to do and strategize about how to actually uh, spend our time. So. Part A, or actually problem one says, consider a steady state plug flow reactor designed to convert compound A to compound B. Assume that it's, the system is isothermal. So I might highlight, I'm actually just going to underline the main points. And <clears throat> there is a chemical reaction that proceeds as follows. So this is chemical reaction kinetics, I'll circle that. I define, so A goes to A star, this is a reversible reaction, A star goes to B. Remember that questions will vary in terms of the actual kin chemical kinetics, and the output is intended to be B, the input is only A. The fluid flows at a constant flow rate F, and the input is only A, uh, there is no B, and uh, it doesn't say this, but there should be no A star as well. We have a constant cross-sectional area, A sub C. And the problem says derive a differential equation or system of differential equations that could be solved to calculate steady state concentration of B as a function of X. Okay, so I'm going to box this because we want, that's what the question is actually asking for. So we want an equation, differential equation. We're not given numbers here, so we can't solve it. And we want to specify the boundary conditions. So I would take a second to think about the big picture. The way I would describe this as I think it's a problem that resembles what you would have done in homework. Uh, the specific chemical reaction may be different but this should be a fairly standard differential balance for a plug flow reactor. And from homework, you probably would remember that it's very important to define a control volume. Since your concentration is varying with X, I'd make a differential control volume uh, between X and X plus delta X. So I see a lot of students on these exams 
who don't actually bother to draw the control volume. And I think that uh, can be a mistake, right? So you want to show your thought process. So I'm not gonna do the balance just yet. I'm gonna go to the next part. <clears throat> so part B says now model the system, same process as in part A, but it's conducted in a stirred tank or uh, instead of a PFR. So the inputs look the same. So FCAN, uh, the kinetic laws are the same as in part A, system is isothermal. The fluid volume inside the tank remains constant at V, that's this. And the tank initially contains no solute. I think that is going to be important because we're probably going to be asked to define the initial conditions. See diagram, derive a differential equation or system of differential equations that could be solved to calculate CA in the effluent as a function of time. So notice that this question is not ask, asking us to solve for CB as a function of time. So that's a bit of a twist. And then we want to specify the initial conditions. So once again, I think this question looks like a homework problem. It needs to be adapted to the specifics of the situation, but I don't see any curveballs in this question. So also look at the number of points. So 15, 15. So I ought to be fairly well practiced and I ought to be able to get close to 15 plus 15 or 30 points without having to uh, deal with anything too strange. Part C, which happens to be the last part of this question, so that's problem two, which we're not discussing. Part C, now this is a curveball. Also note that it's 10 points, so it's worth fewer points. Uh, unfortunately, the designation of points often is unfair to the students who have the deepest level of knowledge, right? So the, the extra points you get for solving the hardest question is not always worth your time. So this should also take a little pressure off of you. So now let's see what's going on. Now consider a more complicated plug flow reactor situation. The reactor is filled with catalyst particles because the reaction would be too slow without the catalyst. The presence of the particles requires fluid flow in the gaps between the particles. The diagram below um, and the bullet points describe the details. So you have the same input, right? So CA is going in, there's no CB, no CA star. The effective cross-sectional area is AC. We called the cross-sectional area AC before. But it, now it's a different formula. So it says um, previously it was just pi r squared, the cross-sectional area of the tube. But now because of the, uh, the particles, the effective cross-sectional area for fluid flow is going to be the area, the gaps between the pellets, but it's still called AC. So in abstract mathematical terms, there's no change. Now there's a change in the kinetics. Okay, so the catalyst is not dissolved in the fluid. Um, a must first adsorb or stick to the catalyst. So A goes to A star. And um, now A star refers to A that is stuck to the surface. So we're going to assume that we have to use the standard mass action assumptions. So in other words, the kin kinetics just look like standard kinetics for something dissolved in the fluid. Uh, you'll learn in more advanced classes that that's not a very accurate way of dealing with things. Um, and then once absorbed to the catalyst surface, A goes to A star goes to B star. And once B star is formed, it can desorb into B. So we have different kinetics. And we're once again asked to derive a differential equation or system of differential equations that could be solved to calculate steady state concentration of A as a function of X. Okay, so I'm gonna box this. And um, so I say you can refer to the equations in part A uh, as needed. So that suggests that some of the work in part A is actually translatable to this problem. 
And the hint here says, remember that A star and B star correspond to the species that flow or that do not flow with the fluid because they represent compounds that are stuck to the stationary catalyst particles. So this is the real twist here. And by the way, this question does not seem to ask about boundary conditions, unless I'm missing it. I don't see any place where it asks about boundary conditions. So it's really about how do the balances change. So if I were doing this problem, I might be a little scared by part C, but I should remember that my practice from the homework is very translatable to parts A and B. So in the next videos, I'm going to solve parts A, B, and C independently. But right now, as far as strategy is concerned, I'm just going to focus on what I'm comfortable with. I'm going to do parts A and B. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, I did draw the control volume for part A. So I'll draw the control volumes for B and C. So the control volume for a stirred tank, we're doing time-dependent balances on a, um, on a stirred tank. And so everything is homogeneous within the tank, so our control volume is the tank. And here our control volume would go back to being the control volume for a plug flow reactor. And we've got to do the balance equation. So I will spend, if I were taking this exam, I would focus on parts A and B because that way I would get most of the points. And then I would kind of think about whether or not I could resolve what's the twist in part C uh, and, um, and spend that time, only if I feel like it, I would probably first try to see what points I can easily get on the other questions on the exam.